script, I work at Read Write Web, which is a little uh, blog on the internet to write about technology. And uh, basically, what my talk is about is to ride down for keeping it real. Big ups to Joy for paying all the bills. Big ups to my rock. The new kid on the block. Saying invest in no Okay, that's my first slide. No allows for a real time socket. Now that's me. You cannot stop it. Guillermo from their booth. You guys all heard this from before over here? Awesome. If you want to copy it. to install packages, use the module system. It was So, uh, this is my first slide right here. This is actually the uh, default image for this theme right here. And uh, I had to include it because it looked cool. And it's a Ducati. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, I'm uh, not the best uh, programmer ever. I uh, kind of just like a kind of make it up as you go kind of guy. And so uh, that's why I'm on the B track and not over there. <laughs> uh, I just like to like put modules together and try to make them work. So uh, I love GitHub. You can see I have like 57 repos and uh, it's a lot of crap actually. <laughs> Okay, so uh, these are just pretty much all the modules that I use on a daily basis for all my different projects. Um, and it's all about standing on the shoulders of giants. I really like that phrase because it's like all the good people are down here. Yeah, over there. Yeah, that's me right there. So yeah, these, some of the modules I'm just going to like give you a look at. You probably have already seen them before, maybe not. They're really good to uh, have in your arsenal though. So you got CoffeeScript by, does anybody know how to pronounce his name? Josh Kenas? Josh Kenas, all right. Second Chainsaw by Substack Express, TJ Hollow Waychuck. Redis by uh, Salvador Fen Sanfilippo. Now.js request by uh, Michael. And discovery, which is a shameless plug that I wrote like yesterday, and I decided to throw in here. It's my first uh, npm not module, so. All right. And that does not really fit on the screen. Okay. Anyway, this is CoffeeScript, and who in here has already used CoffeeScript before? Okay, so like half about. Essentially, what it does is that it's like JavaScript, the good parts where it will only let you use like the non-crap parts of JavaScript. Like it will pass like JS lint like strict mode on everything. So you're like actually have good JavaScript without really even trying. And that's on the left side there, that's like the copy script. And then on the right side is like the, what it evaluates to in like normal JavaScript. And then you'll see that like over here, like It, uh, it puts everything in its own scope, so you don't have any global variables, which is pretty cool. All right, the next one is uh, SAG. This is part of like flow control. Substack wrote this, and essentially what it does is you'll see that you uh, require a SAC, and then, oh, is this on? Awesome, okay. So you require a SAC right here, right? And that means sequential power is parallel. So it does the first one, right? And then after it executes that, it has a little thing inside of it that says, okay, I'm done. Go down to the next one. But if you got a parallel one, it go does both of them at the same time, and it passes both of these guys right here as these guys right here. And so it does a sec on do two of those right there after both of those are done at the same time. So you don't have a bunch of like callbacks and stuff like that. You can just do flow control code. Oh, and then over here, you can't really see it because it's off the screen. Uh, it's a dot catch, which is awesome because like normally you'd have to do like a catch on each one of these, but if you have a catch up there, then it'll catch any errors that you have in here. So you only have to have one catch statement to catch any error you have in that whole spiel over there. This is another example of the sec module right here. 
just using different stuff. And you can see at the bottom that it's taking A, B, and C and doing them all at once. All right, this is Express. It's uh, pretty much the backbone of every like web type of thing that I do. It uh, just gives you like really simple DSL, kind of like Sinatra. If you guys are familiar with like Ruby Sinatra, so you just have an app up there that you can't really see, but you just require Express, and then you just create app, reading, doing a new create server on your Express object, and then you just listen on a port, and then it's just really simple, you know, get, post, whatever your method is, whatever the route is, and then your callback. All right, Chainsaw. This is a really cool module. I actually built my module using Chainsaw. What it does is it's, it's for creating modules. So you can use flow control in your module when you create it. So this is a, an example of a function called add do. And it has two methods, add and do. And it over here is an example of like, it'll work. So you, you do add do. You instantiate it with a 0. So it sets your sum up there to 0. And then you add 5. And then it does sum plus equals n, so it adds 5 to it, and then it goes to the next one. So it's like, OK, I'm done. This is now 5. And it's like, add 10. All right, so it's like 15 now. And then the do is actually gives the result of sum back from your this do method right here, where it says a saw nest. So it returns that back into your sum. And it's like, OK, if sum is greater than 12, then add a negative 12, so subtract 12 and then add two, and then back down here, do your sum, and it's like five or something like that. Redis, this is one of my favorite libraries in the whole world. Well, actually, the whole system of Redis. Um, I'm coming from Ruby, so I use this a lot in Ruby. Um, it's pretty much just a key value store. So like, if you want to set like a string, you just do set the key, the value, and it just persists it to the disk. So you can, well, it actually persists it to memory. And then like X amount of writes later, you can set it in the configuration file. Uh, you can be like, OK, after like 5,000 writes or whatever, then like persist it to a file. But uh, you have different things like hashes and sets and lists. And it's really fun to like uh, do just like in-memory storage stuff. It's kind of like memcache, but different. Actually, my biggest use for this that I didn't even put up there is like pub sub. So like for like inter process communication, uh, like I'll have one process go, OK, anytime an event happens, I'm going to publish like, hey, yo, this happened. And then the other process will have a listener on it. And then it'll uh, accept a subscriber over here and say, OK, that happened, and then do something else. So I can have stuff on like two different things going on. like. So I have architecture spread across the, like the whole system or whatever. And then they're all talking to each other in real time. And then they can all just be event driven using the pub sub uh, capabilities of Redis. OK, Now.js. Has anybody ever used Now.js in here? All right, it's kind of a new library. All right, like three people. So anybody heard of Socket.io? OK. So this is like an abstraction on top of Socket.io. So where Socket.io is, you know, there's a server and the client, and it talks to each other. Well, this is for the server and the client also, but it's a lot more shorter, as you can see right here. Like on the server side, you just do, OK, no, now JS equals require now. Everyone is just kind of like magical variable that stores this uh, namespace inside of it, so everybody's synchronized. So if I do like everyone dot foo equals bar on the server. All the connected clients now have everyone.foo equals bar without actually explicitly like telling the clients to set that. So everybody's in sync, so everybody has the same namespace variables. Uh, so like this is de defining a method right here. So like everyone.now get server info and a function callback or whatever. So what I can do on the client is I can do, all right, now dot get server info. And I'll look on the client and say, OK, do I have this function defined on the client? And if not, then it automatically looks on the server for that 
function in and executes it. So it kind of blurs the line between having a function on the client side and server side, because essentially to the, the client, they're all the same. So you can do some really cool like real-time stuff with like multiple people doing that kind of thing. So here's an example of like server side to client side, server side to client side. So on the server side, you, have, you define distribute message in the everyone now namespace. And then on the client side, you're like, all right, now.name prompt, what's your name? And then they click the button, and then it does now.distribute message. And see, since it's not set on the client, it automatically jumps up to the server and executes that function with this argument. And then it returns that value. And then everyone that now distribute method. So that's on the server side. And then it calls the receive message. It was set up there. And then receive message down here. So it, regardless of what side it's set on, you can call it from wherever. So it, I use it a lot for uh, like games and stuff like that. Request. This one's by Michael Rogers. Uh, it's just a really cool utility for doing like HTTP requests on stuff. So you can use like the standard like Node.js HTTP library. But uh, I like this one because one of the big things it does is it follows redirects. So if you get like a 301 or 302, it'll automatically follow that. Um, and here's some example code of how to use it. So like request, and you can put the method in there and the URI, and you can send multi-part messages, and then it's just an array of what parts you want to send it. Um, and then there's a response body. So it gives you three different variables in your callback, and then you can evaluate those and do different things depending on what they evaluate to. All right, this is a module that I made using Chainsaw. So you can kind of see the flow control up here. So what it does is you just you require the module, and then non block equals discover. And then what it's doing is it's looking for the, uh, the RSS and Atom feeds in the main page. It's looking for like the link rel equals application Atom XML, application RSS XML. But instead of doing like callbacks, you can just do l the find method. And then when you run that, this is what you get. So it, looks, it goes to the first line, look mono blocking, and then doing other stuff now. So you're not blocking or halting up your execution on any one of those. And then at the very end, where it says dot do feeds for feed of feeds, console log feeds, is this, this is what it outputs. So just a really terse way to kind of just like process stuff. And this is written in CoffeeScript right here, so it might look a little bit different if you're not used to seeing CoffeeScript syntax. Oh, yeah. And this is the slide is for Max. Yeah. All right. I'm probably, like, not even close to being 30 minutes, but 15 minutes is good. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or anything? What do you mean by feed aggregation? Um, we have some things like we'll have like a big list of like a couple thousand feeds where uh, we go through and we splice all of them together to make one big feed. It's kind of like all the current data from like all the different feeds we have in different topics. And then we can look at what's going on with that. Um, but that's like not so open source, so. <laughs> Can you pull up your, uh, like your first, your first slide for content, content for a second? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I work with CuffDB and uh, I've always felt like CoffeeScript is going to be a pain in my ass. Do you think that's valid or 
I think it. I think it depends on like your style, right? Like if you like the syntax and like it feels good doing it, like do it. And if not, then not. And because I mean, it's like they're kind of saying for CoffeeScript, is CoffeeScript is just JavaScript, so like it just evaluates the JavaScript. So it's not like a different language or anything. So I mean, it's just way of generating JavaScript. So like if people don't like it, like I'm not trying to like proselytize and like tell them that they have to use CoffeeScript, like. It's just whatever feels right. Do you mix and match CoffeeScript coffee script and regular JS a lot? Not really. Everything that I write is uh, mostly CoffeeScript. So all these examples, I just copy and paste it from the, like, the website for the example code because I didn't really want to make my own code since it was already there. So, uh, so yeah, like, as you can, like on my module, like, that's why it's CoffeeScript because, like, that's pretty much all I write. Just because I like the, the syntax of it. I didn't even notice. I was like, that's JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Parsing, like, how to find what the, the feeds were or whatever? Um, I did... It's a good question. I use a... Uh, some, I forget what library I use. I can pull that up real quick, actually. Yeah, it was an NPM library, I'm pretty sure. Sure. Uh, it's a not module called HTML parser is what I used. And this is all coffee script in here. This is the library itself. It's not that big. So like right here, I do like, where's HTML parser? Handler new, HTML parser default, handler right here. And that's do, it creates a DOM element. And then I just can do a select on that DOM for link elements. And then uh, I do a for each link, and then it gives me an element as my return. And then I just do a regular expression match for RSS or Atom. And I yank out the, the href for that. And then I return it in a, uh, an array. Yeah, I, I've used uh, step and sec. Um, I like sec a lot. Um, I haven't really used it in anything in production. I just played around with it before. Oh, because sec is for like actually writing your program, whereas chainsaw is made for writing your modules. So like it's one. It's like different sides of the same coin. Is soup select like a buddy of HTML parser or? Is oh yeah, soup select is a. Uh, it's a way because like HTML parser gives you a, a DOM element like right here, and then s select is where soup select comes in, and it just allows you to easily select your DOM elements. So it gives you really like terse way to just to, I just do select DOM link for each, and then that will go through every DOM. For every uh. <laughs> for every link element and just give me the the properties for that without having to do a lo whole lot of code. Uh, so, um, are people using JS DOM and jQuery now right in Node? Uh, what, what is the relationship of these to that? Can you, I guess a, a, a question might be, can you evaluate uh, JavaScript libraries What do you mean, like? Uh, like, is the DOM actual, like, if you can see the plant DOM, and you can make the DOM three nodes? Yeah, like, if you can use the three and you should not parse it. 
I'm going to say probably. I mean, I haven't really I only used that library just because I needed a quick DOM element, and I read on like some blog that that was a quick way to do it. So I haven't really played with it enough to know like how fully featured the HTML parser DOM is. But I mean, it, since it's a DOM, if one of the dependency of a, dependencies of it is probably JS DOM, and that's probably just a JS DOM element. But I don't know for sure. Anybody else got any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. Uh, I think it was a bus module. I was just curious. I don't know if you know. Uh, is it, do you know if it supports HTTPS? Ooh, good question. Um, well, the guy who wrote it is here. Yeah. It sh it should. If If it doesn't, you should give them crap about it. <laughs> All right. No more questions. I'm done. <laughs>